Now the fifth inequality that we want to study is triangle inequality. Though this inequality is a very simple inequality, but it has very wide applications in multiple fields and gives an access to very interesting inequalities. Now here the inequality is, if there is a triangle ABC, whose side lengths are small a, small b and small c, then we know that triangle inequality dictates sum of two sides of a triangle is always greater than the third side. That means we can write A plus B will always be greater than C, B plus C will always be greater than A and C plus A is always greater than B. So if ABC are sides of a triangle, then ABC must follow this relationship. Now let us take one example. It says if ABC are sides of a triangle, so we have if ABC are sides of a triangle, then the value of expression A upon B plus C plus B upon C plus A plus C upon A plus B cannot exceed. Now, if you closely look at this inequality, this inequality, it has a setting of a famous inequality called as Nesbitt's inequality. And Nesbitt's inequality is if A, B and C, they are positive real numbers, then A upon B plus C plus B upon C plus A plus C upon A plus B, it is always greater than or equal to 3 by 2. We have already proved this inequality using 12 methods. So for any positive real numbers, this sum will always be greater than or equal to 3 by 2. Now clearly this inequality, it has a lower bound. We are talking about its upper bound considering ABC as sides of a triangle. Now for this, what we will do is we will let a plus b plus c s 2s where s is semi perimeter now we know that b plus c will be greater than a now if we had b plus c both sides we can write two times b plus c will be greater than a plus b plus c which is 2s or simply we can say b plus c is greater than s. So we can write b plus c is greater than s in the same way c plus a is greater than s and a plus b is greater than s. Now if we take the reciprocal we can write 1 upon b plus c will be less than 1 upon s 1 upon c plus a will be less than 1 upon s and 1 upon a plus b will be less than 1 upon s. Now if we multiply this first one with a, so we get it a upon b plus c, it is less than a upon s in the same way b upon c plus a will be less than b upon s and c upon a plus b will be less than c upon s. Now, if we add all these three, we can write a upon b plus c plus b upon c plus a plus c upon a plus b will be less than a plus b plus c upon s. Now, a plus b plus c is 2s, so it is always less than 2. So, from here we can write this value, it cannot exceed 2. And that's your option C. Today we'll discuss an interesting problem in geometrical probability. And the question goes like, if you break a pencil in three parts, what is the probability that the three parts can be arranged to form a triangle? So 
suppose we have this pencil and suppose length of this pencil is L. Now we have to break this pencil in three parts. So suppose these are the three parts. Now suppose length of this first part is X. Length of this second part is Y. And length of this third part will be L minus X minus Y. Now first we'll find uniform sample space for this given condition. So we know that this X it should be greater than 0 but less than L in the same way Y also should be greater than 0 but less than L and the third one which is 0 is less than L minus X minus Y and it should be less than L. Now here we know that X and Y they are both positive so from the third one we will get this condition as X plus Y is less than L. So we have three conditions. So X should lie between 0 and L, Y should lie between 0 and L and X plus Y should be less than L. So we'll plot this region on a coordinate plane. So X it takes the value from 0 to L in the same way Y takes the value. So this is X and this is Y. So y takes the value from 0 to L. So we have this region, which is this square. And then this third condition, which is x plus y is less than L. So I'll draw this line, which is x plus y is equal to L. So it'll be the straight line passing through these two points. And then x plus y is less than L. So if I'll put origin, so 0 is less than L, which is true. So that means we can break this pencil in three parts whose sample space can be represented by this uniform area and which is area of this triangle. Now we need to find this condition that these three parts, they can be arranged to form a triangle. Now let three sides of a triangle be A, B and C. Now we know that ABC are sides of a triangle if they satisfy triangle inequality and triangle inequality is sum of two sides is greater than the third side. So that means A plus B should be greater than C, B plus C should be greater than A and C plus A should be greater than B. Now I will take A plus B. So what is A plus B? A plus B is X plus Y should be greater than L minus X minus Y. So from here I'll get x plus y should be greater than l by 2. Now from the second one, b plus c is greater than a. So what is b? b is y and this is plus l minus x minus y. It should be greater than x. So here y will cancel. So here I'll get x should be less than l by 2. And from the third one, c plus a, c is l minus x minus y plus x and it should be greater than y. So here I'll get y should be less than l by 2. So the condition that these three parts, they can be arranged to form a triangle is this x plus y should be greater than l by 2, x should be less than l by 2 and y should be less than l by 2. So I'll mark this region. So I'll take x as l by 2. So this is x is l by 2 and then I'll also have this y equals l by 2. So here x should be less than l by 2 and y should also be less than l by 2. So we have this square and now this third condition is x plus y should be greater than l by 2. So first I'll draw this line which is x plus y equals l by 2. Now this point is l by 2 comma 0. This is 0 comma l by 2. So I'll draw this line. So this is x plus y equals l by 2. Now if I'll put x and y as 0, I'll get 0 is greater than l by 2. So that means 0 doesn't satisfy this equation. So the area or the region that we need is above this line. So the condition that these three parts can be arranged to form a triangle corresponds to 
this blue triangle. Now we'll calculate this probability that these three pieces they'll form a triangle. So what is the favorable area? Favorable area is this area of blue triangle. So this is half. Now what is the length of this side? So it is L by 2 and this also is L by 2. So half L by 2 into L by 2. And then what is the total area in the problem? Area of this black triangle, so which is 1 by 2. And then length of this side is L. This side is also L. So that is L into L. So half will cancel. L will also cancel. So this is 1 by 4. So it simply means if you have a pencil and if you randomly break it in three parts, then it is 25% chance that these three pieces will form a triangle. Now question number eight, it is very interesting question. It says how many non congruent triangles are there with integral lengths a less than equal to b is less than equal to c such that a plus b plus c is equal to 20. Now since a, b, c, they are sides of a triangle, they cannot be negative. So what we'll do is we let a as say 1 plus x1 where x1 is greater than or equal to 0. So we have substituted a with 1 plus x1. That is the minimum value of a can be 1. Now b is greater than a. So we can write this b as b equals a plus x2. So that means this b will be at least as large as a. So we can write this as 1 plus x1 plus x2 where again x2 is greater than or equal to 0 and in the same way this c is greater than b so we can write c as say b plus x3 so which simply means we can write this as 1 plus x1 plus x2 plus x3 where x3 is also greater than 0. Now we are given this condition that a plus b plus c is 20 so we'll add them then we'll get 3 plus 3x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 and this should be equal to 20. So we can write this equation as 3x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 and it should be 17 where each of x1, x2 and x3 their integers greater than or equal to 0. So this is the condition that we have when a plus b plus c is 20 and a is less than equal to b is less than equal to c. Now we'll need one more condition that these three lengths they'll form a triangle. So three numbers they'll form a triangle if they satisfy triangle inequality and which is sum of two sides must be greater than this third side. So that means from here we'll also need to write a plus b must be greater than c. Now what's a plus b? a plus b is 2 plus 2x1 plus x2 and it should be greater than 1 plus x1 plus x2 plus x3. Now here x2 will cancel. x1 will also cancel once. So simply we can write 1 plus x1. It should be greater than x3. So we need to find solution to this equation provided x3 is less than 1 plus x1. So now we'll put in the values of x1, x2 and x3 and then we'll see how many such triangles are possible. So we'll consider the values of x1, x2 and x3. Now we'll take x1 as 0. Then in that case, we'll get this equation as 2x2 plus x3 is equal to 17. Now we also know that x3 is less than 1 plus x1. So that means x3 is less than 1. So the only value possible for x3 is 0. Now x3 has to be an odd number to get an integral solution. So that means for x1 equals to 0, we won't get any solution. Now when x1 is equal to 1, we can write 2x2 plus x3 and this is 17 minus 3. 17 minus 3 is simply 14 where x3 is less than 2. Now in this case 2x2 plus x3 is 14 so that means x3 can take only even values. So the only even value possible in this case is x3 equals 0. So that means we have one triangle in which x1 is 1, x3 is 0 and if we'll put x3 as 0 we'll get x2 as 7. Now we'll take x1 as 2. So we'll take x1 as 2, we'll write 2x2 plus x3 and it'll be 11. And here x3, it is less than 3. Now again x3, it has to be an odd number. So the only odd number possible in this case is x3 equals to 1. So that's our second triangle possible. 
Now it will take x1 as 3, then it will be 2x2 plus x3 equals to 8, where x3 is less than 4. Now here x3 has to be an even number. So we have two values of x3 possible, either x3 is 0 or x3 is 2. So, so it will give us two more triangles. Now we'll take x1 as 4, then we can write 2x2 plus x3 is equal to 5. Now where x3, it should be less than 5. Now x3 take odd values. So value of x3 can be either 1 or value of x3 can be 3. So we have two more triangles. And then finally we'll have x1 equals 5. So we'll get 2x2 plus x3 and this is equal to 2 where x3 is less than 6. Now in this case x3 it has to be an even number. Since this value is 2 so x3 can take only two values and which is either the value of x3 is 0 or the value of x3 is 2. So we will need to count number of triangles possible. So we have one triangle here and then we have one triangle here. We have two triangles here, two more and then finally we will have two more triangles. So it will be 6 and to 8. So number of such triangles possible is simply 8 and that is the answer to this question.